Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC hobby. Okay, I'm beginning the build of the Avia 2.5 meter glider that I'm going to be using for F5J competition. Now, this is a mostly built airplane. The wings are built and covered. The tail surfaces are built and covered. The fuselage is molded from fiberglass. Still, there's a tremendous amount that you need. And what I'm about to say is not a knock at the vendors that sell these kits. Um, it's just the reality of the situation. If you go to the uh, required or recommended items list, it's going to have motor, prop, speed control, battery, maybe a, a short servo list. There's a lot more involved, always is, and that's just the nature of the hobby. So you want to do some planning and you want to have everything you need in advance before you start building. Uh, otherwise, things just become disjointed. Let me give you an example of some of the small items that you're going to want um, that are not on such a list. Uh, you're going to want servo wire and various types of connectors to rig up the wiring harness for the wing servos. Um, the wing servos for the ailerons and spoilers are mounted outboard from the fuselage and you need considerable runs of wire uh, with connectors so that you can power and send signal uh, to those servos. So you're going to need things like um, RJ connectors and a crimper. You're going to need wire and having some uh, other connector types. For example, I'm going to be using a pair of these. So in other words, there's four pieces, uh, male and female, and it's a six pin connector. Now, one of the things that I'm going to do um, for this uh, wiring harness is I'm going to try to minimize the amount of wire I need. In other words, uh, instead of having six wires running up the wing, uh, positive negative power for each servo and a signal wire for each servo, I'm going to have a signal wire for each servo and I'm going to have one pair of positive negative that runs up the wing, powers the first servo, and then continues up and powers the second servo. Um, if you're not experienced uh, in RC or have a knowledge of electricity, you might think that each servo needs all three wires to be connected to the receiver. In fact, all it needs is the one signal wire. The uh, positive and negative power leads could come from any source. They there's no necessity that they come from there. It's just convenient in the way that most systems are set up. But when you're running long wires out the wing, the extra two wires that go out to the flap and beyond add weight. So if you can use the same pair to power both servos, you're saving several feet of wire, uh, multiple grams of weight, and uh, that's always something that you want to keep an eye to when you're uh, building an airplane like this, especially if you've got competition in mind. Okay, got kind of off track there, onward. These are the various things I'm going to want for this airplane. Now, some of these are wants versus needs. Um, this is a device required for competition. It electronically limits the airplane's runtime and altitude. So that's a want. You don't need that to build this plane. This is a altimeter sensor and it sends 
information back through the receiver to the tr uh, transmitter uh, via telemetry. And again, this is a want and not a need. It's not even needed for competition because uh, this is the item needed for competition. Um, so I'll set that aside. Okay, also left out the spinner and props. Sorry, I had those off to the side. Now, um, I could even let go of two of these servos. I have extra servos for the wings. Um, I'll probably have an extra servo for in the fuselage for the tail section. I just don't have one at the moment. Um, but you know, because of competition, it's uh, good to have a, a spare. I'm going to be using this type of flat wing servo uh, for the flaps. This is a higher torque servo than these uh, Coronas. Um, it also weighs a little more, consequently. Uh, I'm going to be using the Coronas for the ailerons, so I have a spare of each. Okay, and we'll set those in the want pile. Okay, uh, these are the batteries I'm going to be using. It's a uh, Tattoo uh, 1300 milliamps. I've actually got an 850 milliamp on order because that's probably all I'll need. I might not even need that much just, uh, you know, because the competition, you only run the motor for up to 30 seconds. So you don't even need two batteries. One, but you can argue that you only need one battery to fly the plane. Okay, another want item. We still have a pretty good pile of stuff here. We could even call this a want. Um, I consider it a bit of a need because of the uh, the rate that uh, the motor is going to be run at. It's going to be run at full throttle with as much prop as it can handle. Uh, so there's potential, you know, remote but potential to burn out the ESC, and that would include its internal BEC, and that would uh, mean that the airplane had no power whatsoever and the radio would stop and the plane would crash. Uh, so I'm using a standalone BEC to provide power to the receiver uh, and to the servos. Another advantage of uh, using the standalone model is that um, this one is configurable. You can set the amount of voltage it puts out and the servos I have are capable of handling 4.8 to 6 volts. The 6 volt uh, puts out more torque and has higher speed. So I want to take advantage of that. Uh, torque is particularly important for the flap servos. So um, that's one of the, another reason to, to use that. Uh, this big thing here is a sheet of fiberglass. Uh, this is G10. It's actually a little thick. Um, this is four millimeters, but I don't mind it being thick. I'm going to be cutting a piece of this to uh, make a new firewall because the firewall that comes with us has the standard uh, outrunner motor four bolt pattern, and that will not work with the motor I'm using. This is an extremely small motor. Um, it's very light. It's an in runner with a gearbox. This portion of it uh, is the gearbox, and uh, it's it's an amazingly powerful uh, motor for its size and for its weight. It weighs in below half the weight of an outrunner of the size and power that you would want for this glider. Uh, and this may almost actually be more power uh, than this glider needs at full throttle. So it's definitely going to do the job exactly what you want for competition. But this bolt pattern, these two little holes here, are all that holds that motor on. So I want to use, um, I need to make a, uh, a new firewall. Uh, the firewall that comes with it won't work. And... Um, I'm going to have to, uh, I want this to be as solid as possible. Um, I'm going to be drilling some lightning holes in it, but I want it to have next to zero flex, um, so that, um, 
to make sure that this motor stays mounted properly. Okay, so even if we set that aside, all these things are needs. So that's a lot of needs that, you know, go beyond that initial list of four items. And that still doesn't include glue, um, all the tools that are going to be used in this process. So uh, there's a lot involved and proper planning makes a lot of difference. Some things you can't even tell until you actually get the kit in hand. Um, I saw what the recommended spinner size was from uh, the uh, uh, vendor that I ordered this from, which is SoaringUSA.com. Uh, they seem to be very knowledgeable and uh, enjoyed talking with them and getting uh, information about this kit. A lot of websites don't tell you how big in diameter the spinner needs to be. And that means until you get the kit and measure the fuselage, you don't know what size spinner to order. This is the right size. Inevitably, I probably will, will not use this. This is a very inexpensive uh, spinner that I got off of um, Hobby King's website. But what I want to get and have on order is the uh, what are referred to as a turbo style spinner. The spinner has a hole in the center and the uh, bolt that mounts it on is um, on a structure that is within the spinner and recessed. That allows air to enter directly through the spinner, pass through the back wall, which also has uh, ventilation, and that air can pass straight into the fuselage. It doesn't do much good to have ventilation holes in your firewall if the firewall is completely covered by the spinner and you definitely want airflow through the fuselage. You don't want it to be like a parachute, but you also want to make sure there's enough air coming in to keep the ESC and the external BEC cool, keep the motor cool, uh, keep the battery as cool as possible. The battery will uh, rise in temperature as it discharges, and it's going to discharge quite rapidly uh, because the plane is going to be flown at full throttle uh, for the 30 seconds or um, 200 meter, 200 foot height, 200 meter height, whatever comes first uh, in a competition launch. Uh, so all things to consider. Anyway, this is the first video of what's going to be a pretty long series. I'm going to be very detailed about this build. I'm going to assume that you know little to nothing about RC, and I'm going to try to provide as much information as possible. If you have any comments, uh, please feel free to leave them. Thank you for watching. Please click like and please subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, please click the little bell icon after you subscribe. That will provide you with notification every time I launch a new video. Thank you for watching.